In this video, we are going to implement a random walk algorithm, and in the next one, we are going to use this algorithm to create a list of positions that will represent our floor of the dungeon. So, first of all, we are going to create a new folder inside our assets folder. Right click, create a folder. Let's call it underscore scripts. Okay, let's open it up. Here, right click, create C sharp script. And we are going to call it procedural generation algorithms. And let's open this script up. Great. Now for this tutorial I am using Visual Studio 2019 and I will be using some snippets and short keys that I know for this IDE. So to get the most out of this tutorial I recommend that you use also the Visual Studio. Okay. We are going to delete update and start methods, and this will be not a mono behavior. We are going to make it into a static class. So we want to type public static class, and this will be this will those will be the algorithms that will be available for any other class that wants to access them. And first of all, we are going to start from the random walk. We want to create a new method, so let's type public static. We want to return hash set. And in the triangle brackets, let's type a vector to int. And we are going to call this method simple random walk. And we are going to take in a vector to int, which will be the start position. And we are going to take in int, this will be the walk length. Okay. So we are going to use the hash set data type. If you are not familiar with what hash set is, it's just a collection that allows us to store a unique values if the type that we store in it implements get hash code method and equals method. So if we right click on the vector to int and select go to definition, we will open up the definition of vector to int and we can see that it indeed implements an overrides equals method and overrides get hash code, meaning that we can use it inside our hash set data. And this will allow us to simply remove duplicates since we are using random walk and random walk can step on the same field twice. And there is no need for us to process the same field twice, the same position twice. And that's why we are using the hash set. In addition to that hash set implements some interesting methods. We can visit the documentation for it. And here they are. They are union with, intersect with, accept with, and uh, symmetric accept with. And all of those methods allow us to quickly remove or add or select a subset of our hash set. Uh, for example, creating a subset of positions that are only in both hash sets that we pass to the methods. So this will be useful for later. For now, let's continue implementing our simple walk. We have the start position, which will be the position where we start our walk and the walk length, which will mean how many steps our agent will do before it will stop and return our values. Okay, so first of all, we can copy the definition of the return value because we will need to return this path. So let's call it path equals new, and we can use the snippet new hash set and create it. Now, we want to add to our path the start position. So path dot add our start position which was, is also a vector to int. Next, what we will want to do is we will want to create var previous position is it will be equal to our start position. And we are going to save new position as the previous position. And from this previous position, we are going to make another step. So to do this, we are going to simply create for loop, tap tap to use the snippet, and we are going to have this already created for us. So we can start from i equals zero, move with tab to the length. And now we can type walk length. So this will step from i equals zero to the walk length. And what we will want to do is create a new position. So var new position. It will be equal to our previous position. And we will want to add to it a random direction. 
And to do this, we are going to create a small class in the same file. We are going to create underneath the class procedural generation algorithms a class called public static class and call it direction 2D. And this will be the class that will allow us to get a random direction. So first of all, we will want to create here a list of cardinal directions. So let's create public static list of vector to ints and we are going to call it cardinal directions list equals new again use the snippet but now we are going to use these brackets that will allow us to specify the int vector to int values just when we initialize this list so we are going to create new vector to int and pass it a direction of up so this will be 0 on x value and y on y value and this will be the up direction so we can add comment up next new vector 2 and we want to go in the clockwise direction so this will be the right direction so 1 on x and 0 on y value and again comma and this will be right again uh, enter and uh, on the new line a new vector to int now we want to have downwards direction so 0 on x and minus 1 on y this will be down and again uh, we need to add comma at the end of the vector definition and enter and last one will be new vector to int and we want to go left so minus 1 uh, comma 0 so minus 1 on x 0 on y and this will be the left direction and this is it let's add the ending of the line at the end of the definition of our list and those will be the directions and now we will want to have a method that will get us a random direction so what we can do is create a public static vector to int and we are going to call it a get random cardinal direction okay and we are going to implement in this method a way to return our cardinal directions list open the square brackets and let's call random dot range and we are going to pass here zero up to cardinal directions list dot count and this will be this will get us a random direction so we can call it when we are creating our new position in our for loop let's call direction 2d since this is a, class, a static class we can access it this way dot and we have our get random cardinal direction and this will give us a random direction for our simple random walk so we are uh, moving one step from the previous position in a random direction what we want to do is add it to the path so path dot add our new position and at the end we want to set our previous position as the new position and this will be it this will run one random walk at the end of this method we will need to return our path that we have created and this will run our simple random walk great we will add to this class of algorithms new algorithms as well as to our direction to the new directions so we have easier time using those classes so we have uh, everything in a separate spaces of course you can put your direction to the in a separate script it was just easier to create it right now because we are going to use it extensively in this procedural generation algorithms class. Make sure that you save the script and in the next video we are going to create another script that will make use of the simple random walk to create a floor for our procedural dungeon. See you in the next video.